Namaste. Mera naam Yaz hai. <clears throat> Sorry, let me try that again. Hi, I'm Yaz from the Brainstorm Force team. Did you know that English is only the third most spoken language in the world? And now when it comes to your WordPress website, if English is your only available language, you could be missing out on a huge audience. That's why in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can add translations onto your WordPress website and make it multilingual. This can open up your website to a much wider audience, allowing you to get more customers and fans. But before we get started with the video, if you're seeing our channel for the first time, we're Brainstorm Force, the company behind the most popular WordPress theme in the world, Astra. And on our channel, we create WordPress tutorials for beginners and non-coders. So if you want to improve your WordPress skills, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on your notifications. So if you're ready, let's get started with the video. All right, here we are on my computer. And before we get started, I just want to quickly show you the website we're going to be translating in this video. As you can see, this is a website for a coffee house. And all I've done is install the Astro theme along with this coffee house template using the starter templates plugin. And if you don't know what starter templates are, they're a library of professionally designed, fully functional website templates that you can load up in just a few minutes. And this coffee house template is an example of them. And as you can see, it's really beautiful. It's fully functional. And everything you see here, including the text, the design, the photos, everything has been loaded up using the starter templates plugin. And our website is good to go straight out of the box. And as you can see, we've got a lot of content on this web page. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how you can add translations to all of this right here. And to do that, first, we're going to go into our WordPress dashboard at the top. And here we are in our WordPress dashboard. And we're going to go on the left hand side here into plugins and go and press add plugins. And from the right hand side here, we can go in and search for, we can search for translate press. And the one we want to use is this one here, translate multilingual sites. We're going to press install now. And we're also going to activate it. And as you can see here, translate press has now been installed. And we can go ahead and press the settings down here. Or alternatively, you can go ahead and settings down here and go ahead and press translate press. And here we are in the Translate Press menu. And I'm just going to quickly take you through all the settings and help you configure Translate Press. So under the General tab, we have our default language. Currently, it's set to English, United States. If you want to change your language, you can do that here as well. you got English, UK, and whole other different languages, whole other list of languages you can choose from. But for this video, let's go ahead and continue with English, United States. I'm going to leave that as is. And down here, under All Languages, here you can add other languages you want to add onto your website. So currently, we've got a default language at the top. You can also set the formality. So you can choose between default, formal, or informal. I'm just going to keep it as default. And down here where it says choose, we can drop this down and choose one of the many different language options we have to add onto our website. For this video, let's go ahead with Hindi. I'm going to type that in. We've got Hindi right here, just like that. And we can press add right here. And as you can see, it's now been added. But in the free version of Translate Press, you can not add more than one alternative language. For example, if I go ahead and add a different one, so let's go ahead and say Arabic. It's going to mention that we need to get Translate Press advanced add-ons to add more than one additional language or more than two languages, including the default one. So we're just going to leave that and we're going to scroll down. And here you have the option to use the native language name. So if I enable this, it's going to show the native name in our menus in our website. Otherwise, it's going to show up in English. We're going to leave this as no for now and we're going to see what it looks like. And we've got a few other different settings right here. But the important one we're going to take a look at is down here, which is language switcher. So we've got a few different options here. The first one is shortcode. So basically, this one lets you add your language switcher button into any part of your website using shortcode. I'll show you how to do that later. And here we have menu item. So you can add the same language switcher functionality onto your menu. And down here, it's a really cool feature. It's called the floating language selection. And what it's going to do is it's going to add a little floating menu on the bottom right of your website, or you can actually choose a location as well. And that will allow you to change your language from anywhere on your website from the little hovering menu right here. And after we configure everything in the settings here, I'm going to show you how each of these functions and looks on your website as well. But first, let's drop this down and show how we can show our different languages in that menu. Full language names. So it's going to show the full name of that language just in text. And next, we have short language names. It's going to show the short form of the language name, just as text once again. And next, we have flags with full language name. It's just like it sounds. And next, we have flags with short language names. And lastly, we have only flags. You have five different ways you can show your languages in the language switcher. And you can choose exactly how you want it to be shown depending on which method you choose. I'm going to keep it as default because I want to show you how the flags look with the full language name as well. And we'll go ahead and check that out in a little bit as well. I'm going to do the same thing for the menu item. And lastly, for the floating language selection, you can also choose a dark theme or light theme. And I think for our website, the light theme would probably look better. Let's go ahead with that. And you can also choose where you want it to be displayed. You can have it on the bottom right, bottom left, top right, or top left. I'm just going to keep it on bottom right as well. And you also have the option to show a powered by Translate Press right beside the menu. I'm just going to leave that checked off just so it looks a little bit cleaner. All right, now that we've finished configuring Translate Press, we can go ahead and press Save Changes down here. All right, there we go. Settings saved. 
And next, you might notice we have a blue translate site tab over here. And don't worry, we're going to click on that next. But first, we're going to go into automatic translation. I'm just going to show you the different options we have as well. With Translate Press, you have options to translate your website automatically using either Google Translate or DeepL. As you can see here, once I enable automatic translation, you can see a lot of different options drop down as well. Over here, you can choose which translation engine you want to use, either Google Translate or DeepL. It's actually feature a Translate Press Pro add-on. I'll talk about that later on in the video. So I'm going to switch back to Google Translate. And to use Google Translate for Translate Press, you actually have to go on Google Cloud using the link down here. You have to sign up and get a Google Translate API key. And if you're wondering why you might want to do automatic translations over manual, the obvious benefit will be the convenience as all your translations will be done for you. This is especially useful if you have a big website with a lot of content. You can try this out with Google Translate. If you don't like the translation quality, you can always try DeepL instead. But in this video, I'll show you how you can add translations manually, and this will be more than fine for those of you who have smaller websites, and it won't take too long to add your translations as well. My only advice would be to ask a friend who speaks the native tongue of the language you're adding to review your website and make sure your translations are carrying the same emotion and intent as your original content. So definitely make sure to review your website, especially if you're using automatic translations. And alternatively, you can also try a combination of both automatic and manual if you'd like to as well. But if you want to figure out how to get a Google Translate API key for yourself, I'll make sure to leave the instructional link down in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and press no right here to take that off. All right, now we can go ahead and press this blue Translate Site button right here. Alternatively, you might notice that we have a Translate Site button at the top as well. You can press on that as well. Here we are on the front end of our website once again. Then this might look a little bit familiar because on the left hand side, this does look a lot like the customizer menu. But what this actually is, is Translate Press's menu. And this is where we can begin adding manual translations onto our website. Let's find out how it works. So if you go ahead and click anywhere on your website, for example, we've got the welcome banner right here. If I click on that and press the edit button, you can see that it's chosen the welcome text and we've got that in English. And it asks you to enter the Hindi version as well. And just to show you how it works, I'm just gonna type in welcome in Hindi just like that. And if that works all right, when we switch languages, that text right here should change from welcome to welcome in Hindi like we've written here. You might notice that we have a previous next button right here as well. So right now we've got a welcome text selected right here. And if we press the next button, it's gonna move on to the next piece of text on the website. So right now it's moved on to come enjoy the lorem ipsum. That's the one we're on. And if I drop that down, you'll also see all the text available on that web page ready for you to customize. So Translate Press makes it extremely easy to go through your website and begin adding manual translations. So right now we can go ahead and change this as well. We're going to add something like this. Come enjoy the cafe and in brackets in Hindi, just like that. I'm going to save that once again and that's all good to go. And you can already see down here what that button looks like. And we've got the light version of this going on as well. And I think that really suits the website. For example, we have that, this one right here. You can see if I press the edit button right here, we have the English version. It shows us the link to that image right here. And you can actually add the translated version of that right here and or paste the link right here as well. So it makes it extremely easy to change everything on your web page from English or whatever your default language is to your new translated language. So once again, I'm going to make sure everything's saved and let's go ahead and take a look at what the website looks like. All right, we're back on the front end of our web page and down here we have a language selector, language switcher, and currently it's set to English and we got Hindi right here. And you might notice that we have the design we chose. We got the flag right here as well as the language name in full text. So if I go ahead and press Hindi right here, you can see that the text we changed or translated are now showing right here. So it says welcome in Hindi, come enjoy the cafe in Hindi. So of course you can add an actual translation and it will show up just like that and it will replace the original text on your website that was originally in that default language you had. So that's how it works. And as you can see, it's working perfectly and it only took an instant to translate to the language that we specified. All right, I'm going to switch back to English because as you can notice up here, even our WordPress dashboard has sort of changed to our Hindi language. So we're going to switch it back to English. And now let's go back into WordPress dashboard. I'm going to show you how you can add the language switcher up here onto your main menu. So let's go back into our dashboard. Under appearances, you can go in here and press menus. And we have our main menu right here. And what we're going to do now is on the left hand side, you might notice language switcher. So if I drop that down, we have different menu items that we can put in onto our main menu. So first I'm going to add English and Hindi as well. And I'm going to press add to menu. I'm just going to move English above Hindi right here because it's our default language. It's going to show that first. And I'm going to press save menu right here. All right, so I'm going to go take a look once again, visit our site, see what it looks like. As you can see here, it's added English and Hindi down here. And in my opinion, using the flag and the full language name doesn't look quite as good in the main menu up here. So let's go back into our dashboard and change that. I'm going to go into Translate Press once again, scroll all the way down here. And where it says menu item, 
we can change this option. So now we can go ahead and press only flags and we can hit save changes. All right, let's go take a look at our website once again. And there we go. I think that looks much better because we just have the flags. And if I click on the Indian flag to switch it to Hindi right here, you can see that the language changed to the translations we added. And it's working perfectly. You can switch it back. And alternatively, we still have our language switcher menu right here, the floating one. We can use that as well. Our translations are working. And next, I'll also show you how you can add your language switcher using the short code option. So back here in the translate press menu, we have our short code option right here. And this is the short code right here. So we can copy this just like that, copy. And let's go into our home page and edit with Elementor on our home page. And for this example, let's just use this area right here. So what we can do right here is search for short code. There it is right here. And we can drag it and drop it anywhere on our page. And we can paste our short code right here, language switcher, and press apply. As you can see, we've got our language switcher button right here. You can see how that works as well. And we can go ahead and preview the page. And here we are on our front end of our website once again. And as you can see, we have our language switcher button right here that we added using the short code. So you have tons of different options on how you can add your language switcher onto a website. And it's extremely easy to switch between the languages that you specify. There we go. We've got our in Hindi once again, our quote unquote Hindi version. And we can switch it back to English as well. There we go. Simple as that. And it's working perfectly. And if you don't want to use the menu, you can use the short code version. And if you don't want to use that, you can always use the hover menu right here as well. And that's how Translate Press works. It's super simple and really easy to use, and it's really effective as well. Now let's take a quick look at the premium features on Translate Press. On screen right now, you'll see the different plans you have for purchasing Translate Press. As you can see here, we have the, we have the personal plan for 79 euros a year for one site. We have the business one for 139 euros per year for three sites. And we have the developer one for 199 euros for unlimited sites. You can see a full range of different features right here for the different pricing plans. And they include advanced translation interfaces. Of course, they have integration with Google Translate that we already saw, flexible language switcher, premium support, SEO pack add-ons, and of course, multiple languages add-on as well. So you'll have support for 221 different languages and you can add as many languages as you need. But with the business and developer plans, you have a lot more different features down here as well. And one feature that I'd like to highlight is the DeepL automatic translation add-on. And DeepL is an AI-based translation service and it's considered much more accurate at translating languages than Google Translate. Sometimes when you use Google Translate, native speakers of that language might pick up little discrepancies or errors in the translation. But with DeepL, a lot of native speakers have reported that it's very accurate and really reliable. And on DeepL's website, you do have a really cool translation tool online that you can use just like Google Translate. So what you can really do is actually paste parts of your website into this translation tool right here, translate it, and paste the translation back into your website. But the only limitations you have with DeepL over Google Translate is you don't have much of a language selection in DeepL compared to Google Translate. You only have these select options right here. So if you're using Google Translate, you can also do the same thing. You can paste your text into Google Translate, translate it and copy it onto your website. But if you do use Google Translate, just make sure you have a native speaker, read over your website and make sure that everything's making sense. And there we go. You now know how to add translations onto your WordPress website. And in my opinion, Translate Press makes it extremely easy to do so. If you want to check out Translate Press, I'll leave a link for you in the description below. That's it for this tutorial. If you got value from this video, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to our channel by clicking on our logo over here. And if you want to watch even more WordPress tutorials, make sure you click on this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.